Really wanted to start tonight doing is transitioning you into doing some type of reporting. And then today is Wednesday, so at some point this week before I leave, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll get you an actual um, mock writing assignment. Mock means... Fake. Fake. <laughs> A fake writing. Uh, so so uh, what, what we'll do is, and what I'll do is take a, an actual piece of journalism and break it up into a whole series of facts as though they were notes and then hand that to you because we'd really like to, we'll start with the writing part. So we're going to start a little bit with, with a little bit of dabbling in the first piece of reporting, which is interviewing, and then we'll sort of transition into that. So, so we're going to pick up where we left off last night. Because the, the interviewing techniques, and I've worked in television, radio, and, and print journalism, the interviewing techniques are not, not so, so different. It basically is a matter of presentation, and you know, um, it certainly wasn't for me. <laughs> so, if I was doing it right, we wanted we wanted at least three students who are willing to to do a pitch, and I would really like to get someone who hasn't who hasn't spoken up a lot in class, and as I said last night, I would like to get at least two women. So, um, so who wants to volunteer for us? Wow, look at the women volunteering. Okay, that's our three. One, two, three. Okay, all right, good. So why don't we start with letting Robert um, interview somebody, then we can switch up. So let's talk about your story. What, it is that, what is it that you want to do? Okay, first of all, my name is Yem Sarash Balak from Blue Nile Film and Television Academy. Um, my story is about a child who born with a mentality problem. Born with? Mentality problem. Um, um, okay. Okay, go ahead. Shall I read it to you? Yes, please. Okay. In our country, a child who born with a mental problem considered as a punishment from God or a curse. So because of this problem, they don't want him to go out until he dies. And they don't want to go to hospitals to get treatment. And because of this, many autistic child dies at home with a lack of treatment. Mm. That's my, that will be my story. That is quite a story. Um, I, b before I get to the other parts of it, so this is cultural in your country, right? You live in Brunei? Yeah, yeah. I'm in Brunei. So, so it's cultural in your country. Um, so um, who's, who's your audience going to be for the story? That's mm. the first thing I'd be curious about. Okay. Um, my audience will be, I think, all Ethiopians, all Ethiopian peoples, because this, uh, this problem is uh, not only... Mm. It's not only one person problem, it's our problem. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so I, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, that, well, let, me, let me back up a little bit. If you, if, if, you, if, if you want Ethiopians to be the audience, so you're going to tell it to Ethiopians. But how, how are the people that you're telling the story about what you feel about this? Mm. I want them to feel, uh, as, I, as I said before, they think that it's punishment from when, when these kinds of children are born. They don't want to sell for, for other people. They only kept them at home. So, so what, is, what is your goal for telling this story? What do you hope to achieve with it? Um, those children have to get treatment and to get well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the who in your story is is the children and their families. No, the, the who in my story will be the children. The children. Yeah. Okay, and 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 the what is the the mental illness, uh, them being kept at home, the lack of treatment. Yeah, the okay. lack of treatment, and they have to be treated well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the where is is obviously in, in your country, uh, but let's let's broaden the where a little bit. To my, my question would be, um, obviously you want to influence other people with this story. So, so if you consider the audience, that's going to be part of your where. So, so where else do you want to tell this? Who, where, where else do you want to uh, influence people and, and include people in terms of the where? So mm. your country, obviously, right? Yeah, okay. it's and, my country, obviously, and um, religious leaders. Because they are the, on the top of, everybody will listen to them. Mm -hmm. 
so if that is that, it's not punishment of God and, uh, for, for this, their sins. So, so I think you've already explained why you want to tell the story, yeah. but how do you want to tell the story? Mm. How do I want to tell this story? Those children, if they, can, if they got treatment, they will be... Mm, they will be healed, yeah, day mm -hmm. by day. Okay, so so where is there treatment available for them? In, in our country, it's not available because of many reasons. Uh, so, so if part of what you want to do is reach those families who are now feeling that they've been cursed as, in a way, yeah, then um, what do you tell them in terms of what the alternative is? So. I didn't understand. Well, uh, alternative. What what do they do if there if there's no treatment? What do they do instead? Yeah, um, if there is no treatment, they can be outside. They can play with other children. And the, simply to let them yeah. play with other children yeah, and get yeah, out of the house. Yeah, day okay. by day, and there will be a treatment available in our country um, from our Mangist in English. So so. Um, who would you talk to as, as resource people, experts, that, can, that these people would believe? You know, um, who, who, would, who would you use as uh, people who can say, here's what you can do for your children rather than keep them locked in the house? Are there experts you can talk to? Uh, doctors, um, so people who do social work, um, any people involved in NGOs or anything like yeah. that? Who, who can you talk to? that will say, here's something you can do for those children other than keep them locked in the house. Yeah, there's some, some NGOs in our country that helps mental children, but there are very few, very according, few. To, uh, according to children in Ethiopia that, are, that have mental problem. So uh, if the society have awareness <coughs> to let them out. So, so um, if, uh, is, is this a problem that's, that's uh, in only one part of the country? Is it all over the country? Is it, in, is it mostly in cities or in rural areas? Or is it, is it just you know, all over the country? It's, uh, it's all over the country, <coughs> especially outside the country. It's uh, the problem in all over the country. So, so I, I sort of view this, this sort of story in a, in a couple of first it's a healthcare story yeah. but it's because this is so cultural it's a social impact story and it's it it sort of is easier i believe to reach people when you're talking about healthcare or services that they're looking for yeah. than it is to talk about social impact yeah. because people have beliefs that are very entrenched and so what you're trying to do in a way is challenge their beliefs yes of so course. so so how do you go about coming up with information that challenges their beliefs without offending their beliefs? Because if you, I also believe if you offend people's beliefs, that they, that you, they, they won't listen to you at all. So how do you do that? How do you challenge their beliefs so that they will come to begin to believe that there's some alternative for their children other than locking them up but not offend them? Mm. But in my story, I'll mention that there are some children that are healed by treatment, by getting treatment. So uh, their children will be healed if, they, if they are well treated. Mm -hmm. And where, where would you go to find, or, or have you already done this? Do you, do you have the, any information already as to, to facts and figures as to the number of children in, in your country who've already been healed? Or are you going to use facts from, from outside your country? No, uh, I already know some parents that have this problem. And I know children will be healed if they got treatment. Mm -hmm. So I have some information. But, but if, are, people, are people likely, what's likely to change their minds? Do they, what do they need to hear that's going to change their minds? It's really going to influence them. As I, say, as I said before, they will listen to their religion, religious leaders if they, if they teach them. And, um, and you believe religious leaders will, will uh, 
will support your ideas, the, the, the whole idea? Of course. Yeah. And why do you, why do you believe that? Mm. Because all people believe in them. I mean, uh, as I said, they think that it's punishment from God. Okay. So they, if they tell them it's not true, they will listen. So, so how long? So let, let's talk about the process for gathering information and then reporting your story. You, this is going to be a written story. Yeah. Okay. So how long do you believe it would take you to gather the information for this story mm -hmm. yeah. and then write it? to gather information from all over the country. I think it will take one year. A year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and how do you, <coughs> sorry, how do you, <coughs> in the meantime, how do you come up with the resources to do the research that you need to do? Um, perhaps the travel that's involved um, and, and support yourself in the meantime. How do you, what, what, where do you get the resources to do this kind of a story? Because mm. that's, that's one of the things I think you have to think about. Yeah. Mm. I think mm, hospitals will help me. Uh, how many children do they born in a year with this problem? Mm. No. And is, is, there anyone, is, is there anyone in your country, particularly NGOs, that yeah. are likely to provide grants for you to do research and things like that? Yeah, there are a few, but... But not many? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, and then once the story is written, um, I mean, have you identified any particular news organizations or anything like that that you believe will run the story? No. Okay. Mm. So, so we, beyond, yeah. beyond, you, beyond the fact that you believe it will help people in your country, do you believe that by telling the story beyond the borders of your country and beyond Africa, that it will bring in people who can assist you uh, or assist with this problem? Yes. So, yeah. so then there is perhaps the opportunity for you to, to, to sell the story to international media? Yes, of so, course. So, so if you've not identified those, at what point will you start to identify those? So? When will you start to, when will you start to um, identify or, or to, to locate international media that are likely to, to buy your story? Mm. Or I be interested in your story? Yeah. I don't have any clue. So I will ask my expert in so our that, country. That's, that's one of the things you might want to, to pay some attention to, okay. is if I'm going to tell this story broadly, mm -hmm. because, it, because of the potential for it to bring some international attention to this problem, that then could result in some international assistance to, to resolve the problem, then you, might, you, need to, you should start thinking in terms of wh who will tell this story um, beyond the borders of my country and then uh, outside of Africa, so that, that uh, other people can know that this problem exists and then maybe uh, bring some resources to, to resolve it. So, so have you written this kind of a story before? Mm -hmm. No, I'm, uh, I didn't write. Okay, so, so what makes you believe that you have the ability to write it now? No, no I didn't write this kind of story, but I wrote another type. Uh, when I learned in my school, mm -hmm. we, we, our teacher gave us assignment to write a story, so I can't write a story. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm convinced that you can do this, but I think you need to, what, what I would suggest to you is that you need to look in terms of, of uh, how you can tell the story in a way that's helpful to the people whose lives are directly affected by it, but without but without uh, offending their culture, you know, even though you come from that culture. Mm. Um, uh, how you tell the story to people in near, near, nearby communities and nations so that, <coughs> who, who understand how to, to uh, show support for the cause. Um, so who do you tell the story to there? Um, where do you find the resources to tell the story? Because that's gonna be an important piece of it. Because, because there clearly is a good bit of research that you have to do. You need to find out where these families are. Um, and let me ask you, if you, if, you, if, if you need to find, the fa how will you find families that are willing to talk to you? And do you believe that there are families who are willing to talk to you? Yeah, uh, I have a story of mine. Mm -hmm. mm, and as I said before, I know some families that have uh, this problem and I will ask some experts to help me. Okay. So, yeah. And do you know, have you met these experts already? No, I didn't meet them. Have you identified them? Do you know who they are? Mm, 
Yeah. Okay, so that's the next thing that you do need to do okay. is figure out who are the experts that can help you, um, both in terms of finding out um, information about the problem itself, families who are affected by it, and then who, who perhaps are able to intervene on your behalf with these families so that you can find someone to say, you know, here's why I have hidden my, my child away because I don't want to deal with the, 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 the ostracization of it and pe people believe that I've been somehow cursed. So, so that's why you, you want to do that. And, and, and the resources issue is really important because you recognize that it's going to take you time to do this. Yeah. And so you need, you need to figure out who out there can help fund your, your story. And then my, you know, because in, in some cases, it may not be the news organization that's going to buy your story. It may be something like an NGO that is also interested in helping you get the story out. So if you know of an NGO that is trying to do uh, to, to, to do work that, that also will help bring, shed light on this problem, that bring, to bring attention to the problem, then it may be that you can get them to help fund your research. Because you can say to them, I have the ability to tell this story to a broader audience across in our country and across Africa and to other places around the world. Mm -hmm. And then you need to start identifying <coughs> who around the world is likely to run a story like that. How long do you think the story would be? How long? Yeah, would it be a long story or yeah, yeah. would it, it be more be than a long one story? story? No, it will be a long story. But a w one long story? Yeah, one okay. long story. So would you think it was a newspaper or a magazine of some kind or what? Mm, a newspaper. Okay, so you need to try, start trying to figure out who that might be. Okay. Or, or I might suggest to you think in terms of news services like the Associated Press or Reuters or, or, or Agence France Press. Um, because because they have widespread distribution around the world, and and that it's an opportunity for base, both for you to to find a broader reach for your voice, and uh, and tell the story all around the world at the same time. Yeah. How would you illustrate this story visually? Visual. Visually, pictures, uh, graphics, charts, um, anything like that. I think have you thought about that? Pictures will help. Mm -hmm. And for, for pictures the first will help time, yeah. because the one thing the one thing I can say if you write a story, um, uh, any story is it, always reinforced when you've got pictures. You know, there's a saying in America that a picture is worth a thousand words, and 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 I think in, it, an, an accurate a picture that accurately portrays a situation is worth a thousand words. But I think <coughs> the, that picture and and your words together are much more powerful. And so the other thing is when you think visually, um, in large part because if you, if you and, and, I, and, I, and I'm quite serious about this because I actually like your story idea. Um, if you think in terms of doing it, if you work with an organization, what, and I think you need to do work on it. One, one, of, the, one of my beliefs is, is that if you have a story idea and, and you really want to do the story idea, that you do as much work on it as you possibly can before you approach somebody else with it. Because people will, will take your ideas and do, their, do it themselves if, if you go to them with, with nothing more than an idea. So you want to go to people saying, I can demonstrate to you that I can do this work because I've already done the groundwork, the, 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 the foundation work, um, the basic work to find facts and figures and identify families and identify religious leaders and the other thing that the religious leaders might be able to help you do is to actually get into some of those homes. You know, I ask you about offending some of those people. Mm -hmm. So they're much less likely to be offended if a religious leader goes with you to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And you have to, well, that's, this is the thing about being a storyteller, is that you have to, if, if you are going to have difficulty getting into a community yourself, it's, it's, it, it helps if you can find someone who can introduce you into that community. So perhaps, so I think perhaps one of the religious leaders, since they don't believe that this is true, can actually help you do that. But I would suggest to you that before you, that before you approach a news organization, yeah. that you do as much work on the story as you possibly can. So that both, it gives them an incentive to let you tell the story. And it says to them, she's already done too much work on this story for us to begin working on it ourselves. So you want to include, as he says, you want to, you want to visually illustrate your story. So that includes photographs, but it also includes things like charts, um, 
which are includes like you, you you talk about there are a lot of facts and figures out there figures those go in your charts and things that il that that illustrate and because news organizations like Reuters and AP um, do these multimedia packages so you can do you can write your story but it can also include photographs video um, various charts and graphics of various kinds so it becomes a whole package and the more elements that you can that you can come up with to illustrate your story in addition to the writing piece of it, the more likely you are to sell it to a news organization. Thank you. And one, one thing I would also like to commend you for, and I'd like to use this as an example for everyone here, because some of the, some of the pitches that I've heard from people are sort of really broad, but she has a very specific story that she wants to tell, and that she's narrowed it down, she knows, she, and she's done a lot of research, and so when she's telling me about it, she's got her idea really in a, in a way that she can tell me exactly what the story is going to be. And that makes a huge difference. Sometimes NGOs have publications. Right. They have newsletters that go out electronically all over the world, or sometimes they're hard copy. Um, and so I was wondering if that could potentially be another um, channel for her it to tell be, her yes. story. Yes. That, yeah, and that, I think it's another reason to look for an, an NGO to partner with because they very well could finance the research yeah. and then publish that research. Yeah, and, and so as I was thinking about an NGO, part of what I was thinking a possibility could be, so if you might be able to help them tell the story of some of the work that they do, and so that could turn out to be a long-term relationship with that organization, or you could then, remember yesterday we were talking about who asked the question, if I'm a new writer, right? Was that you? Yeah. So you could then use that as, your, as a writing sample and then go to other NGOs and say, I work with this NGO, I could work for you. So I've proven that I can write an article that goes in an NGO's newspaper. And you could leverage that as well. Yeah, actually, that's, that's an excellent idea. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You are very professionally dressed. Thank I'm you. very <laughs> impressed. <laughs> Okay, so tell me about the story that you're interested in writing. Yeah, um, uh, I, I had a visit, a work visit last time, uh, four or five months ago to uh, Kenya, mm -hmm. and I was supposed to travel from uh, Nairobi, the capital. Okay, so you were traveling in Kenya? Yes. You I started in Nairobi? And uh, north, northwest, uh, 130 kilometers from, north from northwest of Nairobi. Okay. And when I, when I was traveling, I came across to a very long fence. And then they told me it was a, a fence for a colonial master. And uh, all that territory was, uh, be, belongs to him. So can I make sure I understand? Okay. So in your travels, you came across a long fence, fence. kind of around a property? Yes. Is that right? Yes, a land. Around land? Yes. Yeah. And a very large territory. Yeah. And it belongs to a colonial master. Wow. Yeah, so I. In I 2015, took a in 2015, it to a colonial master. Yeah. Korean master? Colonial. Colonial master. Colonial That's master. kind of crazy, isn't it? That's Very interesting. Very crazy. That is why I'm <laughs> interested. <laughs> yes. Oh, really? Yeah. So when you yeah. say a colonial master, does this mean somebody from colonial times who still yeah. owns this land? Yes. In 2015? Yes, indeed. Okay. Yeah. So wow. I think you are already interested. Huh? Oh, yeah, I am interested. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, You've been yeah. very successful very quickly. Yeah. Do you need as a, as a justification for me to allow, to allow me to write on that story? I do not need you the justification. I, I'm already yeah. convinced, but yeah. if you'd like to give me the I justification will. for I the will. purposes of this exercise. Yeah. So, so yeah. why is this story important? Why would you like to yeah. write this story? So, just like you are surprised. In this time, I was surprised to see such a large, a large portion of land belonging to a very single person, they told me. His name was De La mm -hmm. and uh, I have asked uh, the taxi driver who, who was taking me from, the, from Nairobi to the place that I attend the meeting, and uh, he, he kept on telling me, this belongs to De La Mir, and he's the grandchildren of the colonial master, and this whole land, you cannot imagine, we were traveling along, and he say, this is his, and this one is also his. So it's very long. So like how so long? I, how long? Maybe something like more than 20 kilometers. We have gone more than 20 yeah. or 15 kilometers. Wow. Yeah. And then, That's crazy. And to the east and to the west of the road. So, mm. so he, he has a big farm and he used it, uh, uh, I mean, the, the product from the farm 
he used it for his cutters. Mm -hmm. And then he has his own yogurt uh, uh, factory. Yogurt. So I said, okay, uh, stop me somewhere so that I can get uh, his yogurt. Mm -hmm. And they were selling De La Mir yogurt, De La Mir yogurt. So I bought one. And, wow. Uh, you, you can see, so I, I started to be surprised. And to, to, uh, to a young man from Ethiopia, who is very foreign from being a colonial, yeah. uh, under colonialism, and uh, who have been very free. And to see the Kenyans still experiencing the trauma and even the actual uh, uh, practice of colonialism, it was very interesting story for me to write. So I took a picture, and uh, it's very easy today to, to do stories and to publish them. You have a Facebook wall. Mm -hmm. So I posted it mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the story, colonialism is, n is, uh, uh, is never, is yet over in uh, Kenya. It was the title. Colonialism is, is yet over in Kenya. Yeah. Wow. And how, how did people respond on your Facebook page? I have Kenyan friends, and then when I write, you know, uh, uh, during our discussion, I may bring these ideas because there are practical things that will shock you. He has killed people who has crossed that fence. So the Lamir is that big, big, uh, bigger to be even a, a state himself. Yeah. So uh, there are connections with government. And this, this, because I was very curious, I have asked the taxi driver many questions, and then after I have arrived in my, in my, in my uh, destiny place, where I attend my meeting, I have raised the issue and discussed a lot more. So I have come to know uh, a few things about uh, De La Mir and, uh, and what is happening in the country. A very few information, actually. Wow. So I need to do some uh, further study, further research. Are you listening? Yeah. This is fascinating, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So how do you envision approaching the story? So I have created, I have created a, a group of friends. I have, I have actually started to speak Swahili. Oh, yeah. you're taking Habari Swahili sana, lessons. Sana, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Now I'm not taking a Swahili class, but when, whenever we chat, mm -hmm. they will chat with me in Swahili and I will ask practice. them and then they will say this is a... Uh, how are you, my friend? Oh, okay, so Habari Rafiki, how are you, my friend? Oh. Okay, then I will learn one thing. So I have, I have, I have created friends, uh, and uh, because of my work, I have also contacted in some, uh, with some institutions in Nairobi, based in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of those institutions are government institutions, like mm -hmm. the Focal Person for Small Arms and Light Weapons, if you, have to, if you know for, something. For focal Person for Small Arms. And light Small weapons. arms and light weapons. weapons. Wow. Security okay. issues. Yes. Yeah. So they might give me some information. So I am envisioning to write a story that can initiate a question into the society of the, the, the into the people of the Kenya, especially the youngsters. I want them to ask: Is it normal for a, a colonial master to have that big portion of your land? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the question you want to ask in yes. this story. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Is this normal? Um, yeah. Okay. And, and do we want this for our society? Is that the. Not may, maybe not for, for us Ethiopians. For, say, say for, for Kenyans. Do, for, is this what you want for your society? That's what the. Is this normal? And, and is this what we want for our society as Kenyans? That's is that I, kind of the question you're raising? Yes, that, that's mm -hmm. the kind of question, mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. I will raise. Uh -huh. uh, the most important thing is to raise the, uh, to raise the motivation, the anger yeah. that, that I failed uh, so, that, so that they can feel, feel similar. Yeah. 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 But actually, actually I should do, I, 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 must have, I must do some further research. I don't know if they are okay. But I don't think they're okay with it. Yeah. 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 So, so right now you, have, you said you have a few facts. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you have a few contacts. Yes. So your friend at the in security, small arms and light weapons. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, what other what other resources, since we're talking about that right now, do you have to help you do your research? Uh, actually, there are a lot of uh, uh, writings, articles, and books talking about uh, the post-colonial traumas, post-colonial effects in Africa, and I think I can use those resources. What's happening in Zimbabwe? What's happening in South Africa? Mm -hmm. And those stories can can lead me, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and can support me in a very uh, important way mm -hmm. to develop my own story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what experts 
exist who may have written those books or done that kind of research. Like, I, I wonder who else knows about this man. I would imagine some people know about him, right? Some yes. expert kind of people. They might come to me when I start the, the research. When you start doing the research. Think, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so one thought as you, as you start to do this research and identify books or whatever, um, as you talk to experts, they might be able to help refer you to people. Yes. My guess is, I, obviously I don't live here, I don't live there, I don't know, that, know this for a fact, but my guess is the experts in colonialism and post-colonialism and, and these issues who have written about it anytime recently know about this person or know people who know about him, who are experts. That would be my guess. So you might be able to network through them to some experts on Delamere. I think so. I think yeah. that, that would be something that I yeah. would do, yeah. Yeah. So based upon what you know now, so we know that the who, we think the who is Delamere, mm -hmm. right? But there's kind of another who in the background, which is the Kenyan people, mm -hmm. right? Um, because you're asking this question, is this normal, is this okay, is this what you want for your society, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so our main who is Delamere, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And the what is this story about in 2015, still we still have colonialism yeah. in, in essence, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, and so we know the, so the when is now, mm -hmm. right? That this is a practice from the past, from the 60s, right? Mm -hmm. Or 50s, 60s and, and before, that is still going on now in this little small, maybe not so small area in microcosm now. So that's the when, the where, we know you're telling this story Kenya, about Kenya, so many, yeah. right? Or this area of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Kenya. Um, and so what do we know about why, um, why this exists, why it continues? What, what, what do we know about why? As I told you, I, as I have tried to, to, to tell you before, uh, uh, my discussion with the driver and uh, some friends in Kenya, I have started to understand, I, I have uh, understood a little bit that there is a, a connection uh, with the government offices, oh, okay. government officials. Uh -huh. They told me a story that uh, the Maasai, the Maasai in that area, uh, they are not very much afraid of uh, legal issues. Huh? Mm -hmm. They are not very much concerned with legal issues. Mm -hmm. uh, you will be caught, you will be in jail, and then they don't care, yeah. uh, mostly. So they cross his land most, mm -hmm. most of the time. But once upon a time, somebody crossed that fence. And as I told you, that is a state. Uh, you cannot cross. Uh, so he shot and killed somebody. And it was not very far. Uh, it's not a very long <coughs> story, or it has not. Uh, it's not a, an old story. It was actually before a year or something like that. And they say, uh, and I asked them, so what? What does happen to him? And they say they took him to court, but now he is free. He's a free man. And I say, how come the law become very easy for him? And they told me he has connections. It's, mm -hmm. it's a big portion of land. It's a big economy he has, and they say he, has, he even has support uh, back in the colonial mother country, uh, England. In Britain? Britain. Wow. Yes. So, so he has protection from, from Britain, yeah. and he has also protection from the Kenyan authorities yeah. who get some money from him mm -hmm. in his pocket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so his yogurt business... Is it yeah. local? Is it national? Is it international? Do you I have a sense of that? I haven't seen his in uh, other countries. Okay. I've seen it in, only in Kenya, so okay. like maybe in national. Okay. I don't know. Maybe he's a multi-corporation uh, multi owner. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Wow, this, this is fascinating. <laughs> this is fascinating. So, um, so how long do you think it would take you to research this story? Maybe I should, I should go there uh, for about uh, uh, two weeks. Mm -hmm. If I go to, back to Kenya, if you give me the money. If I give you the money. <laughs> oh! And, uh, if I go back to Kenya, I, I can arrange a place for me, very cheap place for me to stay. 
mm-hmm. because I already have friends, mm-hmm. and then they can direct me to those uh, those places that I can collect information. Mm-hmm. It will it might take me two weeks, mm-hmm. a week to know the areas where mm-hmm. to to find friends mm-hmm. and to uh, develop friendship to those guys who who can. Uh, give me resources, information. Mm-hmm. And then the second week will be maybe the actual work that I can take pictures. Maybe I go to his yogurt factory and uh, interview his workers if they, have a, if they can give me a, a, a information about uh, this Delamir guy. How is he? Is he living in Kenya? Is, is he even alive? We don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe his name is alive. And, mm-hmm. uh, some some groups are working on, uh, mm-hmm. on his name. Well, that so, might be yeah. dangerous. Yeah, yeah, that might be dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. The, so a question I have, though, in addition to your own security, is I'm wondering how realistic it is if this person is basically a, a, a he's a colonial master, right? Mm-hmm. So that suggests to me he has a tremendous amount of power, at least in mm-hmm. that region, mm-hmm. and so people who work in his factory might some combination of really rely on this work and be afraid of him, mm-hmm. right? And so the question that I have is how, what makes you certain that somebody who works in one of his factories is gonna to talk to you? Especially, you're not Kenyan, mm-hmm. you're showing up from Ethiopia, you're gonna come kick up a lot of dust, you're gonna stir up trouble mm-hmm. and go back to your country and they will still be in the community and yeah will still want to have their job in the factory. So what makes you sure they'll talk to you? Yeah, actually, I'm not sure, but uh, I have a great hope that I can get information from the, those people. Mm-hmm. And uh, 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 the, the, the confidence I will uh, give them will be once. One thing is I will let, I will let the, them know that they will, their name will, will not be mentioned. It will be left anonymous. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, without the, I will not mention their name without their uh, consent. Mm-hmm. That's one thing that I can... Uh, uh, assure them. The mm-hmm. other thing is, uh, I will not be publishing that article in Kenya. Mm-hmm. So it will be very far for them to be in danger, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Well, I work for a big publication and I'm very interested in this story. I think it's very interesting. And um, so, and I'm actually potentially open to the, to the idea, assuming that you're going to tell me that you have a history that suggests to me that you can actually, that you're actually capable and qualified of writing this, I'm, I actually might be open to the idea of providing some funding. Mm-hmm. But what I would need from you is f- for you to do some more groundwork or more legwork from Niobe, uh, from, from Ethiopia before you go on this two week trip. Um, for instance, I would like to know more about who you're going to talk to. I would like to know more about your plan on the ground. Mm-hmm. I would like to know more about how, how are you going to get somebody who works in this factory to talk to you. Um, I agree with you. I think that that's really important. Um, so I'd like you to think that out a little bit more mm-hmm. or make some phone calls, use your contacts, mm-hmm. call your friend at, in, in, mm-hmm. in security. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, I also would want you to come up with a budget. For me, I want you to tell me how much it is that you might be asking for to do your research for this. Um, so tell me a little bit more about your background. Um, why, why should I think that you'll actually be able to write a story like this? Yeah, uh, my, my um, educational background, I, I am, uh, I graduated in political science and international relations. Ah, so very much close to it's me. It's good to know. This, yes. Uh, yeah, development uh, mm-hmm. theories, uh, uh, colonialism, post-colonialism. Mm-hmm. Those are- ideas are very much, uh, very much close to me. And uh, I did my second uh, degree on peace and security studies. Ah. So, uh, and what I do, what I do is very much related with peace, uh, security, and politics. So. Uh, and how about yeah. your writing experience? So it sounds to me mm-hmm. like you're very qualified in terms of your understanding of the issues. Mm-hmm. Um, how about writing experience? Yeah, I have, I have written uh, two books. Oh. Uh, yeah. One is actually, actually two of them are uh, related with peace. Mm-hmm. How to do be peace uh, uh, based on uh, religious uh, uh, doctrines. Mm-hmm. So I was a co-writer mm-hmm. in that book. Mm-hmm. And the other book is actually... Uh, 
uh, a teaching module, a student's module on conflict management and peace building. Ah. Yeah. So, and I am also writing articles on a magazine. Okay. Uh, a church organization magazine. Okay. And uh, I have the Peace Coleman. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So, I have a little bit of experience. Yeah. 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 And I write a lot on my Facebook. <laughs> and you write a lot on your Facebook. Yeah. Um, you know, as you, as you were talking about security, I, I wrote a note and forgot to say it, is that um, promising somebody that the article won't be published in Kenya I'm not sure that you can protect somebody from that because this kind of story might find itself on the internet. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Delamere will certainly know that it has been written, mm -hmm. right? So that's something to think about. Yes. Um, how long do you envision this piece being? Sorry. The, your story, how long, how many words? Is it a short story, is it a long okay. story, is it? I, I don't know, it may depend on the information I get, but my plan is to have a, not a very long one, but uh, not a very like, long one. Something like uh, four or five A4 size pages story, something like that. Four or five pages? Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Okay. And. Five pages? A4 yeah. size, yeah. 